How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Today we got some news out of the ECP or European Central Bank talking about inflation and if you think our inflation is bad you should see what's happening over there. We're going to talk about it. Also talk about a big event that's happening tomorrow that could send Bitcoin either into a breakout because really we haven't seen it go above 32.5 in a while or a breakdown. So tomorrow is going to be a really interesting day. And we have the stock market here today getting ready for that. We also have some interesting data about Bitcoin and adoption over time that I want to show you at the end of the video. Really interesting stuff looking at not just the next few days, but the next few years and 20, 30, 40 years out into the future. If you don't mind hitting the like button and subscribe button, I appreciate that. There's also a link down there to FTX where you can get free crypto. So with that link, you get 10% off trading fees, an extra 10% off because they're already low. You also get $10 of crypto when you trade over $100. And they're giving away, at this point, over $60,000 uh, for, uh, for their sponsorship of the Golden State Warriors. I have some money loaded on there myself as well because I want to... I want to buy some stocks and sell some options on there on their new stock trading feature, which I'm getting early access to. So I'll show you that as I do it. So with that in mind, let's move on and take a look at the market. It's breaking down here today. The Nasdaq crashing, S&P crashing, Dow crashing, crypto actually not too bad. I mean, when you compare this to stocks, 0.54% down for the day is not too bad. The reason this is falling is because we have CPI data coming out tomorrow. Now we got the ECP or ECB European Central Bank uh, confirming that they are going to raise rates next month, but all they're doing is moving up 25 basis points and they're going to start uh, or they're going to stop uh, purchasing bonds as well. But their inflation is 8.1% uh, and it just continues to hit records and they're just starting to raise interest rates. Now, part of that might be because they know that they're heading towards recession, especially because of all the supply constraints because of Ukraine and Russia. Now, Ross Gerber actually has a good idea, I think, well, an interesting idea for why we have such high inflation right now and how to fix it. Ross Gerber says it's interesting that people are selling stocks and uh, going into the inflation report we all know that the key to breaking inflation is ending the war we need to send the ukrainian government everything they need to finish off the russian army the sooner the better now i think this is a good point that obviously we can increase rates and that causes people to want to buy less but the fact is there's a supply and demand right the supply is what's being constrained. The demand is what they're trying to bring down. But if we can just open the floodgates and get a lot more products out of Ukraine and Russia, that'd be fantastic. So if that war finishes, if we can move past this, then obviously that's going to be great for inflation and great for the stock market. It's going to love that news. Now, keep in mind that tomorrow will be a very pivotal time. So I'll talk to you about what happens with the inflation data. Uh, some good news that just happened recently is that uh, Ethereum just went through a merge on one of their test nets. They went to uh, the new proof of stake consensus, which is fantastic. It gets them closer to eventually going to 2.0 or not 2.0 anymore. They renamed it to the Ethereum merger consensus. So hopefully we can move forward with that in August and it doesn't get pushed back again. Then some good news on Bitcoin's front as well. We know that there's some regulation that is trying to be pushed through uh, with Senator Loomis and they unveiled this just a few days ago. Recently, we saw Michael Saylor talk about how Bitcoin is not going to zero now because the government's not going to ban it. They can't ban it. So if it's not going to zero, it's going to 1 million. And we got a really good thread from Will Clemente, an analyst, talking about how Bitcoin is exponentially growing as a monetary network. He talks about how all disruptive technologies go through this S-curve of innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority, and then laggers. And he shows this compared to a bunch of other technologies, and I found this fascinating. I'll just put myself up here to make it a little bit easier. So as you can see, they have everything from automobiles to the radio to electric power to internet, social media. The interesting thing is, obviously, you can see some of the earlier technologies took longer to uh, start being used by the masses, like a landline. Here we have an automobile. Here, electric power. As time goes on, you can see some of the newer 
uh, innovations have been used really quickly and adopted really quickly, like the tablet and the cell phone. So this is the mean here. Obviously, it's slow at first and then starts to pick up. What is interesting is we are still so early in Bitcoin's adoption. Right now, we only have about 0.3% or 0.36% of the global population that are using Bitcoin already. And you can see it here over the last 10 years or so. So really, we are right here. Barely anyone is using it. We're still really early on. This is innovators here. This is in the first one fifth of the innovators if you go by 2.5%. And we expect to have it grow exponentially over the coming about 40 years. And then we'll have laggers that continue to get on the network. Now, this is using the mean. So this is what we've seen in the past from all these different technologies. But remember, newer technologies happen faster. We've seen that. And the reason for that is really because if you have a superior form of technology, it spreads a lot quicker now. News and media on it spread a lot faster because back, you know, 100 years ago when we were getting radio or whenever that was, right, news didn't travel as quickly. So you had people that just didn't want to figure it out. And now it's almost a necessity, right? Just to be competitive in the workplace, you need tablets, you need cell phones, you need computers, you need all this stuff. It's just a given. So I would not be surprised if we actually innovated faster and got more adoption faster. Now, this is where it gets really bullish is the fact that as adoption continues to increase, the fact is that the new supply will continue to dwindle down, right? We're going to get less and less Bitcoin. So people are land grabbing now because they know that it's going to be widely used because it is a, a superior form of monetary policy because not only do you know exactly how much Bitcoin is going to be around, it can't be inflated. You also know that you can send it across the world in seconds for pennies. So it's a great form of, uh, it's got a great use case as well. So there are plenty of different reasons to hold Bitcoin, but you can see that the adoption is coming if we compare it to anything in the past that was a superior technology and the supply is going to continue to decrease. So that's just number, number go up technology right there. Now, I want to hear your thoughts on this underneath the video. Let me know what you think is going to happen with CPI data tomorrow. I think that we probably will have lower inflation again and the market will take that as a good sign but you can see we're definitely going risk off going into the close today so it will be interesting i'm not making any big bets on this because really it's just the toss of a coin at this point but hopefully we will continue to see lower and lower inflation just get ready for some volatility i have some money on the sidelines to be able to buy the dip if needed thank you so much definitely check out ftx underneath the video and i'll see you in the next one bye